Hi, everyone. Welcome to uh, my very first live in the Smart Scene and Successful group. Um, originally today, I was going to talk about something called the fresh start effect, which is basically this idea that when September comes along or when any new beginning comes along, it, we can have this rush of new motivation. But to be completely honest with you, as I started taking notes for the live, um, it just, it wasn't really resonating with me. There was something else um, on my heart and on my mind that was coming up as I was preparing for this live that I think will actually be more helpful and I hope will resonate with you a lot more. So we're gonna go with it. I'm calling this a crazy plot twist for our first live here. Um, but if you are joining live, I would love for you to say hello, um, throw me some hearts or some likes if you can. I see we have Brian, we have Liz here. So hey guys, how are you doing? Um, if you are joining live, pop a comment in, let me know where you're watching from. And if you are catching this on the replay, do the same thing. Um, I'll be back, I'll be checking in the comments. Um, so let me know where you're calling from. <laughs> um, so I, the title of this live, I, I called it The Things I'm Afraid to Tell You. And if any of you are big podcast listeners, I'm a huge podcast addict. One of my favorite is a podcast from Jess Lively. She talks about a lot of different things over the course of the, the few years she's had her podcast, but one type of episode she does on a regularly recurring basis is these episodes about things I'm afraid to tell you. And it's always about um, things that are going on in her head that from the outside, you would never know. And it, I've always found those to be my favorite episodes. Um, and I wanted to do a version of that today with you uh, and tell you the, the things I'm afraid to tell you about starting this group. Because as I was thinking about going live about the, the fresh start effect today, there was actually a lot more fear um, and worries that were coming up for me than, than anything else. And I wanna to be totally honest about that because I want this to be a space where you can feel safe um, to share those vulnerabilities. So I wanna be a model for that. If I, don't, if I don't walk the walk and talk the talk, then what are we doing here? So um, I, I guess the first place to start is the, I wanted to create a group like this for a really long time. I probably for the last year or so have just been feeling this sense of disconnection in my business um, or almost like this. It, I email my list regularly. I interact with people on social media, but there wasn't that closeness that someone like myself, I'm uh, an introvert. I'm highly sensitive and so I really value that closeness with other people that's what brings me so much joy it's why I love doing one-on-one -on -one work it's why I love coaching um, because you really get that connection with other people and that was just really missing for me in my business and I wanted to create a space where um, people in my audience could find that but more importantly um, that there was a place where people could feel like all of those um, fears, worries, insecurities that we all have, that there's a place for those to go. Um, but I, I had that poll for a very long time, yet I did nothing. Uh, I didn't start this group until about uh, a week ago or a few days ago. And so I sat on this idea forever because I was really afraid that if I started a group, number one, it would be complete crickets. Who would want to join something? Who would want to join a group like this? Who would even understand what I was doing? Um, I feel I, I get very self-conscious about the um, type of topics I talk about and the type of um, people I work with because it's hard to describe. It's hard to describe what it's like to be someone who's really goal-oriented and high-achieving and the different struggles that come along with that. It's really tough to describe that succinctly. And I was really scared about trying to distill that down into 
a group that was really clear for people. I was worried people would just get really confused and be like, I don't understand what this is for. No one would interact or find it interesting. Um, truthfully, I I'm super introverted. And so just the um, pressure of having to show up really scared me. It still makes me a little nervous, but I'm trying to do the thing. Um, and I, I worried about what you'll think of me. I worried about the fact that I work most days in yoga pants and a messy bun and that that's going to be hard to show up on lives when I'm not all put together and have nice makeup and pretty clothes on. Um, most days it's not really, my, my work doesn't look very pretty or interesting. I don't have this life where I'm, you know, out in New York city running to different meetings where I can document it and it looks really cool on Instagram. Most days it's me in front of my computer in my home office. And that's just the truth of it. So, um, I was worried about that, that because I don't have this super interesting life, people won't want to be involved. Um, and what I'm starting to realize is that the benefit of starting a group like this is having people uh, who are in a community, having other people to connect with you who understand it, who get it. Um, so I'm not sharing all of these different fears and worries and concerns with you because I'm looking for reassurance. I don't, I, I don't want you and I don't expect you to tell me everything's going to be okay and fabulous. Um, I'm sharing this with you because I can imagine, I hope, that many of you can relate to this type of thing, um, to getting consumed by these similar thoughts of just self-doubt takes over, all of the all of the negative worst case scenarios run through your head, um, all of those insecurities come rushing in, right? And it just, it can really consume and paralyze you in every way. So I'm sharing this because I want you to know that number one, it, that doesn't make you crazy, it doesn't make you weird, it makes you human, and number two, that you're definitely not alone. Um, it's really easy to look at other people on the internet <laughs> and everyone looks like they have it together, right? Everyone takes perfectly curated pictures of their lives and their work um, and we see people's highlight reels of all the things that they're accomplishing. We never see behind the scenes. We never see what's going on on the inside. Um, and I wanna show you that that goes for me as well. Um, Cause the truth is that most of us are wrestling with the same types of doubts, fears, worries on the inside. And that actually the more we can be honest and open about those, the more we can use them as tools and the more uh, information we can actually get from them instead of just allowing them to pull us down into that analysis paralysis, those, those feelings of self-judgment that stop us from ever doing anything. Um, and so with this, I wanted to talk about the two different types of fear. And there's a difference between something, there's two different types of fear. There's a difference between something called push fear and pull fear. So push fear is the one that is, um, Contingent on, it's the things we do that are, we're motivated by external approval. So it's the things that we feel that are on our to-do list because we feel that we should do them. It's the actions we, we do to please other people around us. Um, it's things we do to keep other people happy, to avoid rejection, um, to keep ourselves safe or avoid disapproval. Um, and as, again, as people who are very um, high achieving and goal oriented, we tend to fill our lives and uh, the busyness with a lot of the push fear. It's very alluring because push fear makes us feel good. It makes us feel like we're doing the right thing. It makes the people around us really happy. Um, and that is motivating for us. We get a rise out of that sense of progress, right? We like to feel like we're moving forward on those types of things. Um, but a funny thing happens with push fear because 
when you, you usually know what's happening because when you reach that goal, when you reach that external milestone, whether it's, you know, reaching some sort of uh, money goal you set for yourself or getting a promotion, the motivation that you have, it feels a little bit empty. It, it starts to go away. Um, and that's so that's why you may arrive at a point that you were looking forward to and excited about. And there's not that same sense of, um, excitement anymore. And so pull fear is, is very different and pull fear. It's that type of fear that gives you the butterflies in your stomach. And I mention it because it's the type of fear I'm having right now. It's one that has more of a um, hopefulness to up to it. It's it's a goal that makes you excited. It feels more um, spacious, like almost like an unsettled opportunity that you're looking forward to. Um, and one of my clients actually, um, when this type of fear starts coming up for her. She, she calls it getting the scaredy squirrel face, like that kind of like, oh my gosh, am I actually gonna go for this thing? It, it totally freaks me out, but it gets me really excited at the same time. And I mentioned that because as I was starting to uh, script out what I was thinking about for the live today, um, and starting to think about what I was so concerned about, um, I realized that um, I was I was pushing myself into push fear. I was trying to um, follow the rules of what everyone says about how to have a successful Facebook group that you should post a blog post and then go live about it. And I was putting myself into that box. And that push fear just it wasn't working for me. It was it it was bringing up all of these sorts of, um, I didn't know what I wanted to talk about. It wasn't flowing. It was feeling totally disingenuous. And so when I started to think about it and sit with what was going on for me, it helped me return to my original intention for this group. Um, it helped me return to some of that pull fear that actually got me a few weeks ago to finally hit publish on this group and start inviting people in and putting the word out there. Um, that pull fear is the one that I know something like this group needs to exist in the world. I just, I kept arriving back at that again and again and again. And so pull fear is the one that it, it may, it may have some doubts that come along with it, but those doubts are actually trying to get your attention because it's trying to signal that something is important to you. It comes up again and again, um, not to say that you shouldn't do something. Those doubts aren't there to say that you're incapable of this, but rather to get your attention that you should go after something. Um, that it, it's trying to signal to you that this is something worth doing and something that's truly important to you. And so all of this goes to say um, that I am committed to showing up vulnerably in this group and I wanted to do this live today to encourage you to do the same, to feel like you can be your authentic self here because I know I'm sure going, I'm definitely going to be, there's no other way. It's going to be imperfect. It's going to be messy. Um, so I want to ask for you guys to take that ride along with me and let you know that um, I hope you can do the same and I want to give you permission to do the same that, um, it's, you're not going to be weird. Uh, this is going to be a non-judgmental zone. We are welcoming of the imperfections here. And so I want to give you permission to do that. Um, that's all I got for you today. I will hopefully be back soon with another live. Um, if you guys are interested, I will do a live talking about, uh, the fresh start effect. Um, I would love to hear how the beginning of this month is going for you if you're feeling motivated or if you're feeling some of those post vacation blues, um, I think this is actually a great time to self assess and see, look at that list of goals that you have laid out for yourself for the last quarter of 2018 that we're coming up on now and really do really take stock of which of those things that are on your 
task list, which of those are being motivated by this push fear, and which of those are being driven by that pull fear. Um, I want to encourage you that if you have more of the, the push fear than the pull fear, that it's time to reassess and get those things that are really scaring you. Um, get them out in the open. Let us know here. We want to help you work through them. So thanks for joining, guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye.